Yeah, yeah after round, I'm going to go talk to him and uh, figure out what his threshold is for intubation. You want to go in there? Let's go. I need a 95 and a shield, please. Amanda, what's his first name? Buenos dias. So you know the doctor, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the pastor. This is the doctor. We just want to talk to you real quick. They're getting close to where I would say, hey, we need to intubate you. I'm just, I'm just here for support. I want to be able to talk with you, to pray with you, if you'll let me, to give you peace, because I know there can be a lot of anxiety right now. The doctor's giving you a lot of information. It can seem like a really big decision. If you could see me, you could see that it doesn't look like I'm your typical pastor, right, or chaplain. Um, I grew up on these streets rough, and I was a part of the problem here for many years. I think how or why I became a problem that because I was some kid who was neglected. I was a latchkey kid. Parents were always working. When the local street gang came along and they embraced me, they, they became a family to me. And being accepted and belonging to something was, was, a, was a great feeling. Unfortunately, there were wrong motives that drove those relationships, but that's pretty much what, what it was, and, and I fed off of that. I think that my past helps me be empathetic to our community and our patients, and as well as them being able to relate to me and know that I am truly one of them. I've been through it. I'm on the other side. Not that I've made it anywhere, but that there's hope, you know, that there's hope. And I think that has helped bring down many a wall with patients uh, when they won't talk to anybody else, but they'll talk, they'll talk to me. I'm, I'm gonna stay with him and pray, is that okay? Will you let me pray with you after he goes? Good. Cool. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Redondo. I try to be a bridge between this hospital and the community itself because it's where I live, love, and, and serve both the hospital, our staff, our patients, as well as the community. Hey, good morning, familia. How are we doing this morning? I know we would all rather be watching uh, cartoons and eating cereal at home, but we're grateful that you chose to get up early this morning to come out and support the work that we're trying to do here in the community. to see someone like Reverend Rubio who has his own struggles but he's now serving as a role model as an example and as an inspiration to all of us in terms of hey we're gonna go through some tough times but there's still an opportunity for us to do good in the world and to help others regardless of what you may have gone through in the past it's never too late to turn it around I hope that I can be that person that I never had to show these kids that there's another way we don't have to make the same mistakes that you know people that we love dearly friends or family have made that there's always another option he came with a background you know from the streets you know he said it before that maybe he was a knucklehead you know what i mean it all came full circle when you know i believe he decided to to change his life you know and give back to the community instead of being someone who was known for taking you know he's became a giver and that's what this is about I was a guy doing graffiti on the walls. I was actually with the paintbrush, and one of the guys from the city said, are you getting flashbacks? I was like, well, it was actually a spray can, you know? So to be able to leave a colorful stamp mark with, you know, welcome to success and, and to impulse the kids and to spur them on uh, is, is pretty awesome. So yeah, I never thought I'd be doing this at all. Never thought I'd be a pastor, or community activist, or whatever you want to call it, ever. So the, the Combs family that lives here and the Herman family that lives right next door uh, many years ago started hosting these dinners on Friday nights. I mean, we're in the middle of Compton to help get these kids off the street, offer them a meal, get them inside a positive environment to spiritually feed them, nourish them, both physically and spiritually. Welcome. Obviously, we got Pastor Rudy in the house. He's bringing yeah. the message tonight. Give a clap. Give a clap. It's been amazing to see them grow up from teenagers now into young adults, that they're no longer the students that we're pouring into, now they're pouring into younger kids. And to watch that transition has been awesome, and to be a part of it is even more amazing. There's people that would question me, like, why? <laughs> like, why would you stay here? Why don't you go somewhere else? 
and they're difficult conversations that my wife and I have definitely had. Like, is this where you want to raise our children? You know, do you want your kids to be around the same stuff that you saw when you were growing up? And I think that challenged me to, to actually want to make an even bigger change to make sure that the generations after us would have a better chance than, than we did. This is exactly where we need to be to help bring about that change. Uh, Rudy is very important to us. He helps connect people like of all like races and demographics. People in ICU are very sick. You know, a lot of times they're close to death and he really helps to bring us all together and helps the families cope. He is so humble, um, knowledgeable, the big heart, and he's caring. I don't know what we would have done without him. I'm just so grateful that he's here. I have a habit of asking our staff, hey, how you doing? And you know, all of our natural reactions say, I'm good, I'm good. And then I'll, I'll, I'll pause for a second, I'll say, seriously, how are you? You know, and, and then sometimes or, or often I'll get the, the real answer and, and then the story and then try to comfort them and encourage them as, as well. I have like a vivid memory of like a very difficult day. He always comes in rounds and like gives us fist bumps. How are you doing? Especially when we're doing rounds and presenting and it's like this patient's not doing bad. Like, this patient is doing bad. The family's not okay. This patient's doing bad. The family's not okay. When you constantly hear that bad news, he kind of, again, picks up on that and he's like, how are you doing? How are you doing okay? So definitely moments that I was like, Rudy, I just need a hug. <laughs> Um, I stand upon the Protestant uh, Reformation, right, that, that happened with a guy by the name of Martin Luther, who Martin Luther King Jr. was named after, who had a phrase in Latin said, Semper Reformanda, reforming and always reforming. How can we continue to bring about much needed change in our community? And I truly believe that faith is at the heart of it. And I want to help people channel to what that faith is.